Hey everybody, it's Professor Steins, and today I'm going to kind of make a video uh, about Dungeons and Dragons. I kind of tried to do it as a video lecture, or a class lecture, but I don't think it went very well. So hopefully it'll work a little bit better here, and hopefully it'll make sense and kind of show you how working with the database can be kind of interesting. So kind of what I have here is uh, nine tables, and it kind of goes around an idea of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, basically, I had a student kind of come up to me last Thursday and we kind of talked about Dungeons and Dragons and his uh, his 2380 website was about Dungeons and Dragons and he, he kind of did some of this stuff in his website but he really wants to kind of do it as a database and so this is kind of a little bit of what we discussed although if he's probably I'm hoping he's watching this that uh, this is probably a little bit more than what we discussed but basically the the idea is that uh, he wants to have a website around his kind of his role playing group about Dungeons and Dragons where he can have different friends by name and email kind of log into a website and they can kind of create a character based on some stuff and so that's kind of what we discussed is how a character can have one of many classes and kind of have many armors and weapons and spells. I would kind of this, call this a kind of a generation one. Uh, database design. It's probably not that great. It probably needs some adjustments. Uh, but uh, for what I'm going to use it for, which is kind of learning about SQL, I think it's going to do us pretty well. Um, you know, if I was going to kind of, like I said, this, this ERD would probably still need some work. One of the things I might try to do is that right now, uh, you know, in practice, a certain class would have specific armors and weapons that only apply to them. So right now there's no way that the classes are kind of, you know, a weapon can only be wielded by a mage or something like that. So I kind of got some dummy data in here and so I have some kind of some armors and some armor types, uh, different character settings and there's my people, student X. So Essentially what it comes down to is SQL though, is that I can kind of create a query where it kind of ties all this information together. So, you know, I can kind of see that this is me and this is my character's name and, you know, his class type, the name of the armor that he's wearing, the weapon that he's carrying, and uh, the spell that he has equipped. So, you know, like I said, there's probably some work that can be done here. For instance, uh, spells. I'm kind of assuming that the character can only have one piece of armor, one weapon, and one spell. But, you know, one of the things that could be improved upon is that, you know, somehow multiple armors could apply. I kind of got it started with that concept of a slot, is that an armor has a slot that it fulfills. So, you know, uh, what I might do is create another table down here that kind of, uh, sets the configuration for, you know, which classes can use which, uh, which spells or which types or something like that. So anyway, long story short, this is kind of the SQL query that's behind it. And this is kind of the design view of you get of an access, although it doesn't really work for me. I'd much rather look at the SQL view. So essentially I kind of have to pull all the tables together to kind of get this to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of break on inner join and just kind of show how the inner joins are working. So I kind of put inner join on each new line. And there's a lot of them. There's nine tables. So and you kind of see here we start transitioning to on. And essentially what on is doing is on is associating the two tables based on the foreign and primary keys. So once I kind of get them, I'll format it out a little bit. There we go. So I'm kind of starting from a table, weapon types, and interjoining other tables and kind of building the diagram out. So each new table is kind of interjoining, and kind of we start. It, on the most inner one, so kind of this one is associated with this one. This would kind of be all one statement. Oops, not four. Delete. Delete. So this would be the last inner join. We're kind of pulling in this statement for that inner join. 
associating the characters to that car, car armor. And, you know, to some extent, uh, you can kind of mix up and make sure that inner joins different, you can know, kind of building your table from one direction, but kind of could change that around as well. This is kind of what the the viewer gave me, though. What I usually like to do when we're in, uh, when I come to create queries, is I kind of select the tables that I want to choose from. So if I was trying to authenticate people to the application, I might only be interested in the people table. And so I kind of flip that to SQL view. And I could be, you know, select uh, count. So if I get one back, then I have a, I have a value. And that would be where the email and the password meet. That'd be where the email, let's say at email. The password. Yep. I think that's right. So alan.steins at mga.edu and password. I'm kind of using the at symbols as parameters. So what happens when I run the query, I'm going to save this guy and give it a name. Call it authenticate. And when I run it, I'm going to get uh, inner parameter value for email. So that'd be alan.steins at mga.edu. At password would be the password. And so I got back one, which is good. But if I kind of came down and ran the query again, go back to design view. Oops. SQL. Kind of changed it a little bit. It's not really what I wanted. Uh, kind of the same deal. Hit run again. And gobbledygook with gobbledygook, I get back zero. So that could be the function that I call to make sure that people are who they are when they come into the application. I also already created this insert armor one, where I kind of just uh, insert into the armors table a certain type, a certain name, a description, and a slot. And if I were to run that, it'd kind of do the same thing. I could type in you know, a certain type, which I'm just going to throw one at it, a name, uh, belt of invisibility or something. Oops. F5 to refresh. There it goes. So essentially in the future what's going to end up happening is you're going to have a, a whole lot of queries and they're going to do different things. Uh, there'll be screens for adding new armors, maybe new armor types or kind of changing armors around. Like I said, one of the problems I had with the ERD is that uh, I think there should be a stronger relationship between the classes in which spells, weapons, and armors that can be used, which I think could be solved in the database if it's uh, in, a, in a different type of ERD. But essentially the statements would be the same, as that we would be kind of calling different functions that help work through the database application and make it work. You know, I think it could probably work without uh, doing that, but it probably would help. So. Anyway, hope that kind of gets you a little bit more into SQL and kind of seeing how, uh, you know, it's, it's the more tables you add, the more kind of complex your SQL gets. But uh, it's, it's not too bad once you kind of get used to doing it and, you know, kind of figure out different ways of making things work. So, anyway, hope this was interesting. Have a good one. Bye.